Our winner is a tireless worker who exemplifies persistence and an ability to bring together both people and ideas. Born in our nation's capital under the shadow of the FCC in 1946, he is the oldest of three. At the age of 12, he got his amateur radio license, and as a ham, he would learn the basics of how radio works. Summers were spent in Wildwood, New Jersey, where he worked no less than three jobs each summer, certainly a good foundation for working in small market radio. At Fairleigh Dickinson University, he and some friends started WFDU. His sophomore year was spent in Montreal, working as a board op at CKGM overnights, making $50 a week, giving him an idea of how much to pay his own board ops. Upon graduation with a degree in psychology, another plus for working in small markets, he received a master's in communications and education from NYU. He enlisted in the Army Reserves in the early 70s as a radio operator. He met his wife, Sheila, after returning from basic training. They married in 1972, and a year later, they moved to the Upper Valley, where he was part of the closed-circuit TV network connecting Dartmouth-Hitchcock to outlying hospitals. The couple's lives were infinitely enriched when they had daughter Lisa in 1976 and a son, Jeff, in 1980. In 1985, our winner became partners in Satellite Video, a business selling and installing satellite dishes. In 1988, he and his wife, Sheila, started WNTK, bringing talk radio to the Upper Valley. What started as a 250-watt AM daytimer in Newport, New Hampshire, was soon upgraded to New Hampshire's highest-powered AM station at 10,000 watts and has recently added an FM translator. His small market radio empire has grown to five radio stations in New Hampshire and Vermont. His original AM daytimer, WCNL, is now a 2010 Marconi nominee thanks to the hard work and creativity of General Manager Steve Smith. He was one of Rush Limbaugh's first affiliates in 1988. WNTK dares to bring you the programming that everybody's talking about. And helped Rush celebrate his 10th anniversary in radio. He was there when Marconi's daughter and grandson, Guglielmo, dedicated the Marconi Museum in Bedford, New Hampshire. He was one of the first in the country to adopt the smartphone radio apps for all his stations and an early adopter of Wi-Fi radio. And he's certainly not shy about showing it to anyone. At the age of 50, our broadcaster developed a hearing loss and wears earphones, which people often mistake for him listening to the station. But you know, sometimes not being able to hear is a good asset in small market radio. Our winner has consistently strived to reach out to the community with the longest running local sports talk program in the Upper Valley and programs like Twin State Journal. The stations have been privileged to partner with many area nonprofits like the Norris Cotton Cancer Center, the New Hampshire Lung Association, and more. During the ice storm of 1998, keeping the diesel flowing to WNTK's generator was our winner's job. While New London was under the control of the National Guard, Governor Jean Shaheen flew by helicopter and used WNTK's studio, adding to the station's nonstop coverage of the disaster. In 2003, our broadcaster won a landmark legal case, which was taken all the way to the New Hampshire Supreme Court, giving all broadcasters the right to construct broadcast towers where local zoning had previously prohibited construction. Hi, this is Dr. Joy Brown. I've heard you folks from New Hampshire and Vermont are coming down to the city, and I'm just pleased as punch. Our winner has brought together clients, listeners, and talk hosts on many occasions with trips to London, Bermuda, New York City, Washington, D.C., and even Fenway Park. Small market radio isn't always work. He's driven 25,000 miles a year to connect with his clients, many in the famous radio taxi. You could say that he's driven to the moon and back twice. A fitting analogy for the setting tonight. Our broadcaster has been privileged to know and work with many in the broadcasting industry, including his own general managers, Steve Smith and Ray Kimball. It would take too long to name everyone, but radio is a team effort, and there have been many outstanding players on his team over the years. His persistence and dedication to doing the task, no matter how big or small, is a hallmark of our winner. And tonight, the New Hampshire Association of Broadcasters is proud to announce the 2010 Broadcaster of the Year, Bob Vinicor.